Thanks, Rick. And thanks, um, Lizette and, and James. That's a that's great um, overview of, of, of the work that's been happening. And I should, I should add that um, Lizette uh, also at the moment is just starting uh, embarking on a, um, on, on a beneficiation test program on the, on the peak range volcanics, the peralkaline um, units. So we're looking forward to some results coming out from that over the next, uh, next while. Okay. I'm getting, oh, there are two versions open, that's why. I think that's it. There we go. Um, okay, look, I, um, we, one of the projects that we've been, been running, I'll go back to the previous slide, and which you, you heard from uh, James uh, is, is, has been involved in that project. Um, and, and it's targeted basically looking at how we can extract rare earths in, in a more, I guess, um, cost effective, efficient and, um, and sustainable way, I guess, guess you'd say. Um, and, and I'll skip the project summaries, but essentially, most current rare earth processing, and, and you heard about the beneficiation and, and the hydromet um, fr from Lizette and, and James, so I won't, well, I won't touch on it too, too much. But it's, it's the, the hydromet is, is very much a, um, a, a, a process that, that's in, in practice at, at a lot of the current mines. And um, when you look at that leach, I've, I've put this plot together from, uh, from a literature survey we did, did early on this year in the project. And what it's, what it's essentially showing is that um, if, if, if you look at the primary leach for rare earths, they fall into various categories that, that James mentioned. You know, you can have an acid or a base leach and, and iron exchange, and there's also um, chlorination as well. And, and what I've coloured up this, um, this plot, um, so from left to right is, is a typical progress, I guess. You, you, you roast your minerals and then, then you leach them. Um, and, and I've coloured this up, and you, you'll see in the bottom left there, by, by temperature. So that it's essentially, really, what you want to be is down in the blues. So, so you're operating at, at a lower temperature, using less energy, and, and the whole process is generally a bit simpler. So this is, this is just basically to, to show that using, using current leach methods, um, roasting and then, and then the leaching is, is often um, taking you up, in, up into the high temperature range. And at the end of that leach, you, ha you have various issues. You have the um, corrosion problems, um, large volumes of um, acidic wastewater, uh, fluorine gas, uh, vapours, scale formation in the kilns, et cetera, et cetera, and, and of course, high energy consumption. So what, what the project is aimed at is looking at, at, at ways to try and Im improve either your hydrometallurgical process or, or two other processes that we're uh, looking at. Um, so so it's, it's basically a three-pronged approach. Um, we're, we're looking at, at how you can extract rare earths using three methods. Um, the hydrometallurgical, we, we've already, um, or James has already spoken about. Um, phyto extraction there in the middle is, is I, I guess it's relatively new technology, and it's, it's all about utilisation of, of what are called uh, hyperaccumulator plants to extract rare earths. Um, hyperaccumulator plants are, w are well known, particularly in the nickel business, um, and, and what they do, it, it's, it's, as it suggests, you, you have plants growing and they preferentially um, take up various elements into the, into the plant material. Um, so, so we've been investigating the potential for um, rare earth element um, hyperaccumulators. Uh, and the third stream that we're looking at is, is essentially bioleaching, uh, microbiological. So you're looking at utilisation of microorganisms um, to extract or, or immobilise the, the rare earth elements. So it's either to extract those elements or use the, use the bioactivity to, to modify the mineralogy such that those minerals, for example, can then be extracted through phyto extraction or hydrometallurgy more easily. So, so you're essentially looking, looking for a multi-step um, process and it may include any of these, these three. Um, so, so the rare earth potential in, in Queensland, I guess we've heard a bit about it today. Um, but this is just a, a quick plot to, to show you what, um, what, what, are, what groups they generally fall into in, in Queensland. So you can, you can see on this diagram to the right, the, uh, the laterites are up, up in the northeast there. And we, we saw those areas highlighted in, in, in the, the cobalt um, prospectivity uh, also that we're looking at because of the, the mafic rocks up there. 
Um, you have the SCARN and IOCG type deposits, or, or um, as they were called today, I think, uh, metasomatic rare earth element deposits. Uh, the phosphorites we've been talking about. Uh, and then there are a few other, um, other, other, other opportunities with, with less prominent deposits. There's, there's a place called um, uh, Kurabulka, I think it is, about um, a couple of hundred kilometres south of Dejara, where, where there are actual um, nodules that have been found with concretions of, of, of phosphate, um, rare earth rich phosphate material around the, around the nodules. So, so they're the sort of places that we're, we're hoping to be looking at. What I, um, what, what I particularly wanted to, to show on this diagram was the um, was was the grades and and the and the tonnages. So if we look at these hard rock um, uh, projects that are outlined, so so peak range, you know, we might be looking at, at the hundreds of hundreds of um, millions of tons, and and the, the rare earth sort of grades about point point one three total rare earths. Um, and, and Ross Ross has done a lot of work on those. And then, uh, as mentioned today, the Mary Kathleen ores are, are relatively high grade um, ores. Um, there's 7.22% total rare earths. But what is, is also interesting, and there's been a bit of discussion of, is the Mary Kathleen tailings. So, so there was some work done, I think, commissioned by the um, Geological Survey or the DNRME, and, and it estimated that there's sort of a five to seven million tonne resource in the Mary Kathleen tailings of 2.92% um, total rare earths. And, and of course, as, as we've been hearing, the key to unlocking that is actually, well, how are we going to extract the um, extract the rare earths from that. And it's, uh, they're essentially in, in alunite, which as, as Rick was showing, um, there, there are three minerals that, that are sort of currently um, commercially uh, used for extraction of rare earths and alunite is, is not one of them. So, so that needs a bit of work. Um, and then, then you look at the phosphorites and you, and you look at the grades. Um, we have Ardmore, which is the highest grade, that's 0.13. And then you look at the phosphate hill, that's, that's a, bit, a bit lower, but still, uh, still sort of in, in the ballpark, as James suggested, if you, if you can get it out of, the, out of sort of, I guess, a shortcut off the current process route. Uh, so so there, that's just a bit of a look at, at the sort of the, the rare earth potential in Queensland. So the work in, in progress, we, we've spent a bit of time up, up at Mary Kathleen uh, and, and in, we were delayed a little bit by COVID, unfortunately, but we got up there in, in June um, and, and there was a, a sampling program for uh, tailings, uh, plants, soils, rocks, and also crust and, and, and biofilms, which is giving your, your local bacteria. Um, so, so the, the rare earth um, mineralogy, you'll, you'll see this um, plot on the right, um, is, that's, that's a sample with alanite and stuvalite, um, the rare earth minerals with um, uraninite in the ore. And then down the bottom there, you'll see a um, micro XRF um, scan of, I'm not sure if it's that sample or another, but we're essentially trying to map where the, where the rare earth elements are in that, uh, in that sample. And, and while we're doing that is we want to characterise the rare earth mineralogy because then it's, it's critical to know what that is so that if you're thinking about bioleaching and, and plant root um, viability, you need to understand what, what the mineralogy of, of that material is going to be. Um, and some, some of the rocks from Mary Kathleen were powdered and, and been getting put in micro columns to, um, to, to leach them um, with, with bacterial um, agents. Uh, so, so the Mary Kathleen lean tailings that, um, that James touched on um, so, so that's over on, over on the right, that's a, that's a diagram of the Mary Kathleen um, tailings facility. And uh, back in about 2013, there was some drilling uh, done into that um, facility to sample, sample the tailings. Um, and, and we managed to get hold of um, some of those, those samples. And as James mentioned, that we undertook a series of, um, he undertook a series of hydrometallurgical leaching tests that um, we'll get on, onto in a minute. Um, and what, what, what was being looked at there was, well, we, we know we have these alanite, um, alanite tailings. They're already ground, I think, to about 80, 80 um, microns. And, and the idea was, well, we, we know we could sort of bake them and take them to a high temperature and extract the rare earths, but is, is there a way that we, we can do it, for example, being a bit less energy intensive and, and, and a bit less intensive in overall in terms of your acid consumption, et cetera? Um, so, so James uh, and his team conducted those, those, uh, that work, the test work, at, at relatively low temperatures to see if that, that would leach. 
Um, and this, this was the, the preliminary um, data that came out a couple of weeks ago. And uh, you'll see here uh, the extraction percentage down the bottom. And, and that's what James was talking about. Um, so, so they ran the leaches from, from 20 degrees C up to 120 degrees C. And you can see that um, as, as you, you went up temperature and shorter residence time, your, um, this is the, the various rare earth elements, but in, in general, your um, extraction uh, sort of range range from 30, 30, 20 to 30 percent uh, mm -hmm. at the 20 degrees C up to up to sort of about 70 percent um, extraction at, at 120 degrees C. So so it was nice. Um, it's 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 a really nice um, outcome, I guess, uh, uh, knowing that um, you know whilst James talked about you know trying to achieve better extractions, if you already have a tailings uh, resource that's been ground to the right size. Um, and, and there's no comminution required, etc. Then, then you, you can you can potentially find these types of um, you know relatively lower level extraction, like 70 percent may may even be um, economic without having to push it too much further. Um, the other other thing that's been going on is is bioleach work, and you, you'll see in this um, the the pictures on the right over there is um, is some sampling happening of um, of, of where where, the, where there are small um, they're not they're not overflow but but they're small uh, areas in in the tailings dam where, where water is allowed to release, uh, and and you'll see that they're being sampled there, and what the guys do is go down and, uh, and, and essentially sample, sample any biofilms that are sitting on the water in those, those small, small areas next to the um, tailings dam. Uh, and then they, they'll take the, um, take, take the biofilms back, um, understand what sort of um, bacteria are in them and, and, um, and, and essentially then use them for test work in, the, in leach, uh, leach controlled um, conditions, which you'll see here. So that um, uh, over, over there, you'll, you'll see the, um, the small column leeches. They're, they're not particularly large. They're probably only about um, 10, 10 centimetres diameter and, and, um, and, and about 30 centimetres high. But um, what, what they've done is, is put the uh, Mary Kathleen tailings in those, in those um, columns. And then they've, they've taken um, ver various, various liquids um, of, of different sorts, um, including um, elemental sulphur, and they'll add those biofilm samples and then they'll run they'll run that that leach condition through the um, through the column um, for for it's you know a couple of months and then then after that's done they will um, take take the column understand what's happened to the mineralogy have those minerals broken down in the bio leach scenario or or have the bio, have, have the has the um, the have the rare earths gone into solution and and that might be a potential mechanism for, for extracting the uh, the rare earths. So those um, that's work in progress. So, so those um, column tests are happening at the moment at UQ. So so how how you would implement that um, if if you could if you could get that bio leach uh, working is that you would dam and flood the tailings, which you you'll find down down to the um, bottom left on on this photo. Uh, and then you would you would set up your, your chemical or biological precipitation trap uh, as the water and, and and the water would then flow out through that trap and then onto the evaporation pond and, and you would recirculate it up up into the dam um, and, and let it let it uh, go. So you're essentially replicating at the tailings dam scale what those column leach uh, tests were doing. Um, and another part of this this work has been the. Um, the, the hyperaccumulator work. So, so essentially look at looking for plants that might preferentially um, take up rare earth elements. And, and hyperaccumulators, they, they, they work in, in various ways. And, and at the far, one far end of the spectrum, you have what's called a, an indicator plant. So it may preferentially take up a, um, an element, but not in sufficient quantities to, to really be called a hyperaccumulator, which, which is, is at the other end of the spectrum. So, for, for example, in, uh, I think it's in, in, in nickel, a hyperaccumulator would be getting up to the thousands of, of um, ppm in, in the plant, um, but a, a, just an a, a indicator plant would be more like um, tens, tens of ppm or 100 ppm. And uh, so, so the guys sampled a, um, a, a whole bunch of plants out around Mary Kathleen and up near the Copper and El Elaine Dorothy um, prospects, and they, they did find one, one plant that... Um, that has um, has 100 ppm serum in the leaves, uh, while the background in all the other plants there is 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 5 ppm serum. So so that plant is is obviously taking up preferentially um, serum. Um, unfortunately, it's it's not to the level that you'd call it a hyperaccumulator, but it, it is an indicator species. 
So, so why th these, these plants, uh, we talk about hyperaccumulating, um, phyto mining, etc., and that's, that's at the severe end of the spectrum, but as, as well as actually mining, um, these, these types of um, hyperaccumulators can also be used for uh, rehabilitation. Of, of, of areas where, where you want to extract various metals from, from the, the soil and rehabilitate it. And then I guess if you go further down the spectrum and it accumulates less, you can still utilise it as, as, a, um, as an indicator species in your um, mineral exploration, for example. And I guess the, the copper weed is, is, a, um, is a classic example of that. Um, phosphate Hill, I won't talk too much about this because there's um, a Matt's, Matt's certainly given a, a great rundown of, uh, of how that all works and, um, and, and, and what's happening there. Apart from to indicate um, on this, this plot in the bottom right hand side there, you'll see that um, Matt um, uh, was liaising with Phosphate Hill and they provided us with samples essentially of their ore. Um, of their gypsum, which is, is really their tailings, and also of their, their slimes, which is the fines that are floated off at the start of the um, processing, um, at the start of the process. Um, and, and what we essentially see is that the, um, that's, that's a um, phosphorus versus total rare earth plot. Um, and you'll see that the ores are, are relatively high rare earths, up sort of around the 1,000 ppm. Um, and then you'll see the, the slimes are a little bit lower, they're about 300, and the, the phosphogypsum is just below um, 200 um, ppm. So, so that was just sort of to give us, give us a bit of a feel of, of maybe where the rare earths are going, going in that system, but we need more detail, as James suggested, uh, some sort of mass balance of the rare earths in the, in the plant. Um, Ardmore, I won't, won't touch on this much further as beyond to say that we've, we've now collected some um, samples from there and, and we're in, in the process of, um, of getting them prepped ready for the, the hydromet as well as the, as the bioleach uh, work. Uh, peak range volcanics, this is the peralkaline um, uh, complexes. I think I will uh, thank Ross probably for that photo there of, of Clary's Dome. Uh, so these samples were sent for, to us. Um, sort of r r low rare earth grade, but uh, uh, enormous tonnages and, and pretty homogeneous. So we've, um, we've, we're just in the process at the moment of, of putting them through a micro XRF scan, which I was hoping to have this week, but we haven't. But the, the initial verbal comment I had is that the, the, the rare earths are, are pretty evenly distributed through the rock, which is probably what, what you'd expect given it's, it's not vein controlled. It's essentially rare earth in, in the, the main minerals of the rock, the udiolites. Um, so, this is the last slide. I think the initial deposits that, that we're hoping to investigate are the ISCG or the, the metasomatic rare earth elements uh, type deposits, um, Kalman, Milo. Uh, we'd like to look at some of the laterite hosted deposits up in the, uh, the northeast and uh, also, as I mentioned, those phosphatic um, nodules, um, some of the mineral sands and also um, bauxite residues are known, known to have anomalous uh, rare earth. Uh, in them as well, albeit a little more difficult to, to extract. Um, so I will, um, I'll leave it at that. I hope that gives you a bit of an update on the sort of work that we're starting. We, we have some results, but the, a lot of the test work's just beginning, so we hope to have more over the next six months. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs>